Programmatic Creative is you know, a particularly exciting part of the, uh, the puzzle for me, and we're really seeing Asanya take off this year. You know, traditionally, programmatic's been very science-driven. It's been all about how do we, you know, almost treating consumers as though they're equations. How do we push them down the funnel? How do we deliver little bits of creative, tweaked with an algorithmic kind of sum? But now we're seeing you know, programmatic move up the funnel, and we're getting these math uh, art men looking at it now, and looking at the infrastructure and going, how do we use programmatic to tell better stories? And how do we fuse data? And how do we you know, build micro strategies that can then lay it up into one big consistent whole? And this is really giving rise to this notion of what's been called programmatic creative. And just to kind of put some color around that, I'd like to add some distance between programmatic creative and dynamic creative. Like for me, dynamic creative is the science part. It's the bit that we've been doing. It's a media tactic. Whereas programmatic creative is really the fusion of creative strategy and media strategy that adapts to consumer, consumer signals in real time you know, with the inclusion of data and feedback that we're getting from data management platforms. So it's really the seamless connection of media, creative, strategy that's adapting on the fly and being very customized and tailored to our consumers. We're getting ready for Mobile World Congress uh, soon. Uh, what's new in terms of uh, the programmatic offering and, and mobile, I'm sure that'll be a big conversation. Where are things going and what's IPG doing? So I'll be attending Congress. Um, some of the key parts for me would be really identifying mobile as the connector between the channels. So mobile in itself is, you know, is a huge channel. We've seen the consumption, et cetera, and you know, mobile advertising as such is, is already commonplace. But for us, it also provides this ability through the device ID, UDID, other elements, for us to start connecting the channels. So we've seen some big announcement recently, you know, using mobile as a out of home attribution tool or looking at mobile as a locational attribution tool, looking how we can then you know, monitor when people go into dealerships or in stores to make those kind of purchases. You know, we're looking to how do we connect the mobile to programmatic TV or addressable TV, you know, connecting a device ID to an IP. So it's really looking at mobile as this, you know, connected to the person, this device that will go between the channels and allow us to seamlessly act between these channels and connect and identify the person. So that's probably the key area for me and, and my interest in mobile at the minute. And you guys have been on the uh, leading edge of uh, what we call programmatic TV. Where does yeah. that stand? It's growing. It's huge. Look, we're looking to double it again this year. Again, we've announced our exclusive partnership with Chew Mogul. You know, we're we're building our AMP data stack, which is fueling a lot of how we're delivering that TV, you know, very audience focused, very addressable. We're looking to build inventory and scale across that. <clears throat> we're looking, going back to mobile, we're looking to see how we can build a device graph and a social graph into our AMP data stack. They can then connect into TV and further fuel how we're going to be delivering that, but also connecting that again back into locational based attribution and looking how, let's call it, zone addressable TV or household addressable TV can drive in store based on connecting that mobile device as being in that house but also being in that particular location. So again it's growing, we're factoring in how to connect it to all the different channels and you know I just see it taking off in the future. And Mark, tell us a little bit about the, the mix between kind of uh, open exchanges, um, mm -hmm. pr private exchanges, premium exchanges, sure. guaranteed yep. How are those flavors changing in terms of execution, how you guys see that? So again, I see it as all part of what I'd call the prolif proliferation of programmatic. It's really going beyond this notion of being a subset of a channel, a reach driver, the bottom of the plan, to much more of the de facto infrastructure by which media is going to be traded, by which we trade the whole plan. So it's now looking at an agency plan and looking at all the different elements of that plan and factoring in how we can then trade those different elements programmatically and bring in frequency capping, data targeting, you know, audience strategy, et cetera, measurement, and capture that entire plan through programmatic. So that factors in, you know, you've got your deal IDs, automated guarantees, et cetera, and we've got what we're calling the foundational marketplace. So there's currently 300 curated, vetted marketplace partners within our marketplace that are connected to our buying platforms, and we're able to factor those into you know, each and every buy. So what we're seeing is we're definitely seeing you know, a reduction of open exchange moving more into what you would call curated exchange, private exchange buying. And what's the changing attitude of brands? I know that's a very broad question, but mm -hmm. um, you know, 
what's their level of understanding, education, and embracing of programmatic? Again, and this goes back to you know what I was saying previously around the proliferation of programmatic. We're seeing big changes in how it's been seen and perceived, and that's not just you know on our end or the agency end, but also on the client end. You know, we're definitely looking at it now and treating it much more as the infrastructure by which we're going to trade media, as opposed to oh, I need to get my you know, some cheap reach down there or some efficiencies over there. It's much more how do we trade this. And I think one of the big drivers on the client end for that change in perception is you know, the adoption of data management platforms in-house at the client end. So we're almost at capacity on the consultancy side of our business in working with clients to set up data infrastructure, data management platforms, onboarding, CRM, et cetera, and how to use that within programmatic. And it's just, it's a natural progression. Once you have this data platform set up, you've got insight, you've got your CRM built up in there, it's, okay, well, how do I use this data, this insight, to fuel more and more of our media? So I think as, as clients are getting more sophisticated in the data space, they're now expecting us to use that data to deliver more of their media. So it's this natural progression that's kind of you know, hand in hand driving each other.